Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to nine of our chickens. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, chickens. That's right, it's our chickens' birthdays today. Well, at least nine of our 15 chickens. And what I decided I'd do for this video is talk about everything that we've enjoyed and haven't enjoyed for our first full year of taking care of chickens here in the backyard. I'm gonna talk about you guys today, okay? Mostly good things, but there is a few bad, okay? So let's talk about it. So last October, we brought home our very first flock of chickens that we've ever owned before. And going into this process, neither me nor Chelsea had any experience with chickens. This was all something that we knew that we wanted to do and chickens were the first animal that we were looking to have. But we had no idea exactly what to do and no idea how it was all gonna go when we first brought them. When we went to the store to go pick out the chickens, we didn't even understand all the breeds that they were. Didn't understand that each of them could have their own kind of characteristics. We did know that they would lay different colored eggs. When we brought home the chickens, it was a whirlwind of all of emotions. It was excitement, but also I feel like there was a lot of nervous. We didn't know exactly how it was all gonna go. We had a brooder that we bought and had it set up. All those fears though, if we're doing things right, is this the right heat system for them? How much food, how much water do they need? And then you just realize that this is all stuff that until you do it, you just don't know. And that's how you're gonna learn. One of the very first big things that we learned was making sure that when, as soon as your chickens are old enough to go outside, that you do have a coop that's one big enough and two ready for them. We bought a used coop and that used coop was not ready. It wasn't gonna hold all the chickens. They actually gave us two different pieces, the people that we bought it from, so that we were able to extend it and actually make it a little bit bigger. But it took more work than we wanted. It still wasn't that nice. But when all was said and done, it held all the chickens together and it made them survive the coldest time of the year here in Michigan, our winter time. So definitely the number one thing I would tell you guys right away is that make sure that you have a coop that's just ready. Well, it doesn't have to be a new one necessarily, but make sure that you know that it's secure, it's not breaking apart or anything like that. Did you guys need water? You guys have been drinking water this whole time I've been talking. I promise you guys, we'll get to the good experiences that we've had with these chickens. But the next thing I wanna bring up is who our chickens became to be. So we got 10 chickens that very first time around. Nine of them ended up being a hen, one with one rooster. And at first, that was perfect. We wanted to be able to have one rooster so that we were able to hatch out our own chicks, get more chickens if we ever needed to for egg production here on our homestead. And unfortunately, between an incident, between our daughter, who was five at the time, kicking our rooster, our rooster decided not to like us anymore. And he started just charging us every time that we would come near them. And it just was not gonna work out anymore. So unfortunately, after weighing the options of what to do with him, we put a post out seeing if anybody was interested in having a rooster. And we were able to rehome him. And it worked out, so hopefully he's doing much better. I'd like to say we miss you, buddy, but I don't miss you that much. Although our first rooster didn't work out, we decided to try one more time. And Caesar's a funny guy. He's actually part silky, so he has these little furry feet and he kind of looks a little fluffier around, but he's actually still a good side. When we first brought him here to introduce to the flock, we had him just separated between a fence and that seemed to not go okay because we had a lot of showdowns going on between the hens and Caesar, our rooster. After those first few interactions and after it looked like it was gonna go bad, after about 48 hours, they really accepted him and he was able to kind of be the lead rooster, take over and really start to protect the flock. Just like our last rooster, he's super good with the hens. There's no problem with that. He does chase them every once in a while in the morning and it does look like it gets a little feisty, but overall he does pretty good. But once again, 
although there wasn't a big interaction this time. Our rooster is tending to get a little aggressive, but it's not as bad as before. We're still able to walk around in there without him just charging us, but he does definitely keep an eye on us, and he's making sure that he's keeping his hens protected. I just don't know what we're doing wrong, or if this is just how roosters are, and that you need to make sure that you establish your dominance over them over time, just so they understand. But once again, we're kind of in a little predicament, but not as bad as last time, so Caesar gets to stay for now. Unless we hatch out a rooster that seems to be better, but we won't hatch out roosters till next year. I've mentioned a few experiences that have not been good for us this year, but there has been a great experience. So if I'm talking about the good things about raising chickens this year, so I've really found out that chickens are pretty low maintenance. The main thing you gotta do for them is let them out in the morning. And lock them up at night. And then the only thing you gotta do from there is make sure that they have feed in the morning and if you wanna give them a second helping a little bit later. And then make sure they always have water access available. It's not to say that every time is always easy to maintain all those things because we live in a place called Michigan, which if you look in the United States, it's the state that's shaped like a glove and it gets below freezing for about three months out of the year. So that water that we have for them freezes. So you have to come out constantly, either break the ice that's on the top of the water level or get a brand new waterer and bring it out throughout the day during the winter time. The other problem that we've had that I say that just to kind of maintenance them throughout the day, because we've allowed our chickens to free range, our chickens like to break out. We have to get them back into the run that we have fenced in for them. And they've also laid eggs in any spot they can find throughout our backyard or in the chicken run instead of laying directly in the coop like they're supposed to. And let me tell you what, when you start noticing you're getting low on eggs, there's a problem. This is the number one reason a lot of people have chickens, right? And that's what I wanted to kind of get to you guys too is that Obviously, when you have chickens, the one thing you want to be rewarded for, for taking good care of them, is getting great supply of eggs that are fresh and healthy for your family. So when they start laying in spots they're not supposed to, what's up with that? Yeah, who's done it? Sunny, you've laid in the wrong spot. Olive over here has laid in the wrong spot. Chickadees, you like to try to break out. Sunny, again, you laid eggs in the wrong spot and you like to break out. And although those problems have happened to us because we free ranged our chickens, I still love the benefit of free arranging them, although it comes with a few extra issues than to have them in an attached run coop. But that's our preference, and you have to be able to do what you can do, but this is just what we enjoy doing here. Real quick before I get to you guys about the number one problem that we've had with our chickens this year, we want to give our chickens a little birthday present. We figured we'd bring them a cake. Their cake's a little different than a cake like me or you would eat for our birthday. Let's see how they like it. All right, so now let me get to you guys about the hardest problem, and it's one that we just encountered, and a few of you guys that have been following along will know what I'm talking about. So unfortunately, with having chickens and the warm temperature, kind of when moisture is in the air, a thing that they can attract is a thing called mites. When you have chickens, this is just one of the things that you have to deal with. Mites are just bound to find their way onto chickens eventually. But our problem was our chicken coop over here was just infested with mites. And we didn't really realize it till one night when we came out and you could just see all the mites. And they're more active at nighttime than they are daytime. That is one of the unfun things to do. Because now what we had to do was clean out the whole entire coop, get all of our bedding out of there, spray it all down, rub DE, spray our chickens down to make sure that the mites aren't trying to bite them and affect them anymore. And it was definitely our most overwhelming time because unfortunately one of our chickens, Chickadee, whose birthday is today, she was part of the first flock that we got and it's actually our oldest daughter's favorite chicken, was getting really, really, really sick. And what mites do to a chicken is they'll bite at them and then start to actually cause them to get anemic. And you could just see she was walking slow, wasn't really looking right, couldn't go to get her own food. We separated her from the rest of the flock, put her in our lone chicken tractor so that she could be kind of locked in there, 
try to get back to a good health, rubbed DE on her to get the mites to try to kill him off, gave her food, gave her water, and just allowed her to rest in there for about 24 hours, and then we were able to get her back. But these are those things that just are going to happen when you raise animals in general, but that's one of the things to look out for in chickens. But overall, raising chickens here in our backyard, about a nine out of 10, about how much fun it's been and how easy it's been. The one reason we even wanted to start our homestead and to get animals like chickens, and then for you guys who've been following along, you know that we just got pigs here about a month ago. We wanted our kids to be able to see that when you take responsibility and you take care of these kind of animals, build things on your own that you're gonna see everything that you get rewarded for for it. And they've been able just to see the circle of life and see how nature is supposed to work and where our food comes from. And that is the number one reason why I think that if you're looking to get backyard chickens and you're watching this video, go ahead and do it. Start small. We did 10 and that was probably about the most that I would say to start with. But start small if you need to and just enjoy it. It's good to see them just be out here and relax. You see a lot of them right now, they are just doing a lot of dust bathing and dust bathing is how they keep themselves clean by rubbing dirt all over their body and it kind of just... <laughs> Thank you, Caesar. The little grains of like dirt and rock. <laughs> Thank you again. So the little grains of dirt kind of brush on their body and try to just make sure there's no pest on them. <laughs> three for three. Right now we have them on this area. This is where we're gonna have our garden, so they're just kind of prepping it for us. And that's been backyard chicken keeping for us for here in the first year. It's been nice, it's been fun. Like I said, we've really enjoyed it. There is a thing called chicken math, which you gotta be careful. Once you start owning chickens, they say that you have five chickens, then you have 10, then you have 20, then you have 50, and it just keeps adding up. Right now we've been able to stay low at 15, but we do enjoy them and we are looking to hatch out so that we can even store more and preserve more eggs for us, but also be able to supply more for our family and friends. All right. <laughs> it's not your birthday, Caesar. Happy birthday to the chickens. I hope you guys enjoyed listening about how our first year has been. You guys have a great day and a better tomorrow. We'll see you in the next one.